How wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a new study that makes a very bizarre discovery about distant galaxies. A discovery you can kind of see in this image. For some unknown reason, most galaxies in the universe seem to rotate in the same direction. As in there is a preference for the spin of the galaxies, even though there shouldn't be one. And though the author of this paper proposes at least some potential explanations, Today we're actually going to connect this to some of the previous studies that discovered something similar and try to explain this without breaking major laws of physics and without making propositions that don't really make too much sense. And so let's discuss this in more detail and talk about the study by Lior Shamir that you can find in the description. And here you might already see a bit of a problem. This is a single author study that also proposes something somewhat extraordinary. And historically speaking, in science, when there's a grandiose proposition from a single author, it's very often proven to be somewhat incorrect. But for now, I'm going to give it a benefit of a doubt and still discuss this because the data here does seem to be pretty good. Although near the end of the video, I'll briefly mention the author once again because he has been controversial before. But anyway, despite this somewhat skeptical introduction, let's actually talk about the observations and what was discovered. And here this is based on the data from the James Webb Space Telescope, specifically focusing on 263 galaxies from the Jade's field that has been previously used to discover a lot of different unusual galaxies and even some of the record holders. But here the author focused on something else. He actually just focused on the rotation of galaxies. And specifically by focusing on some of these galaxies that were slightly easier to tell and trying to find out which way they were spinning. Now in some cases this was pretty obvious, especially if this was a spiral galaxy with a spiral face in us. But as you can see in some of the other cases, it is actually a little bit challenging. Here though, usually, the rotation curve can be discovered by looking at the redshift and the blue shift coming from the galaxy. But for quite a lot of these galaxies, just based on the morphology, or essentially the placement of the arms, it was kind of obvious which way they were spinning. And so here, 263 galaxies could be seen clear enough to identify the overall direction. And surprisingly, two-thirds were spinning clockwise, with only one-third counterclockwise. Which is, I guess, somewhat bizarre. It basically suggested that for some reason, at least in this data, the vast majority of the galaxies were spinning in a similar direction. And naturally, in a universe that's supposed to be random, we kind of expect this to be closer to about 50%. Half spinning clockwise, half spinning counterclockwise. Which was, I guess, somewhat unexpected. And so what exactly is happening, assuming this is correct, and what are the possible explanations? Now, first of all, because this is just the first study, we obviously need confirmational data first, and even bigger studies with bigger samples, possibly containing thousands and hopefully millions of galaxies. But right now, we only have 263, so let's just go with that. And so, what are some of the possible explanations? Now, the first one is more or less obvious. Maybe this is just the observational bias. Specifically, maybe, for some reason, in this particular sample, it was easier to pick galaxies that were spinning clockwise with the counterclockwise galaxies just positioned in a different way. Now in this study, the author doesn't mention how he picked the galaxies, but that's obviously just one possible explanation. He does, however, mention one other bias that has been previously discussed in additional papers. The bias in regards to the location from where we're seeing these galaxies. First of all, Earth spins. And so some of the previous observations of galaxies using various telescopes from planet Earth could have actually picked up slightly higher redshift or blue shift depending on where they're looking. And that's because obviously Earth produces a bit of motion, and so some of the farthest galaxies could have been seen incorrectly. Here though, because this is from a space telescope, the bigger problem is the actual orbit of planet Earth around the solar system. Since Earth is also orbiting the solar system, there is a bit of a motion here as well. But a much bigger concern is the rotation around the galaxy, because Earth is moving at over 200 kilometers per second, as it travels the Milky Way. And this could potentially produce a bit of a bias when it comes to redshift and blue shift. Or just to rephrase this, there might be a kind of an over-representation of galaxies rotating in a single direction, just because of the way of how we're looking at them, due to the orbit of planet Earth and the orbit of the solar system. And though proposed before, this hasn't actually been confirmed yet, because if it is confirmed, it might potentially explain certain biases in other observations, including the observations in regards to the expansion of the universe. So in other words, this is still an ongoing concern and an ongoing unproven hypothesis. But researchers today actually don't think it's a big concern and have always assumed it to be kind of negligible. 
Nevertheless, this is one potential explanation. But if not these Doppler shift effects, or basically red shifts and blue shifts, what else can it be? Well, here this is where we come to more exotic explanations. The explanation offered in the study involves black holes. Specifically, us living inside of one. This is actually known as the Schwarzschild cosmology, and here the idea is that, well, maybe, our universe is actually inside a black hole. Or in other words, every single black hole out there potentially produces its own universe, because instead of producing some kind of a singularity that doesn't make sense, instead it produces an unusual formation of matter where all of the stuff inside the black hole basically starts to form its own individual universe. You can find some of the previous videos in the description that talk about this in more detail, but in essence here the idea is that the edge of the universe is technically the black hole's event horizon. And we'll never be able to see or hear anything past this because we are inside a black hole. But because all black holes spin, or basically all black holes rotate, all of the matter inside of this black hole will also have a kind of a preferential spin. Which is why maybe all of these galaxies prefer to spin clockwise. Or why the whole universe seems to be spinning clockwise as well. And this is also based on some of the previous research that proposed a kind of a galactic pole, potentially suggesting a rotating universe. Once again, videos in the description talk about this more. But here the assumption is that every single black hole out there creates its own individual universe. But a universe that's kind of independent of everything else. With the only remnant from the previous universe basically being that spin. The remnant spin that causes some of the galaxies to spin in the same direction. But there's no way to communicate between these universes, because no information goes in and no information goes out. And so the spin produces the axis of rotation, but the thing is this unusual axis of rotation has been previously explained as a bias as well. As a matter of fact, once again, one of the videos in the description talks about how it's extremely unlikely. As a matter of fact, it's extremely unlikely we live in a black hole as previously presented by other studies. And so this black hole hypothesis, or Schwarzschild horizon hypothesis, is also super unlikely. Cool idea though, but just not enough evidence to support this and quite a lot of evidence to suggest otherwise. And though not really mentioned in this study, there is actually another study from a few years back that potentially connects all of this and possibly explains this at the same time. And without breaking any modern theories. Here, let's go back 10 years and take a look at quasars. Approximately 10 years ago, researchers using the European Southern Observatory Telescope discovered a bizarre pattern in many different quasars billions of light years apart. When observing their spin and when observing their overall placement, they actually discovered that quite a lot of them, and actually most of them, seem to be pointing in the same direction and seem to be spinning in the same direction as well. Not all of them, but the vast majority of them. Just a quick reminder, quasars are essentially supermassive black holes in centers of various galaxies. But in this case, super active and extremely bright. And here, out of 93 quasars, many of them seem to be doing the exactly same thing. And back then this was completely unexpected. But was eventually confirmed and also explained by basically knowing what we know about the universe. Every single one of these quasars seem to be inside the mysterious cosmic web. And their alignment along with the rotational axis could simply be explained because they were all formed along an extremely large scale structure. Basically inside a cosmic filament that was spinning or rotating in a very similar way. And so essentially here, the explanation is that every single one of these quasars was inside of this super super long hallway of gas, where we actually expect all of the galaxies to form, where most of the gas was just spinning in a very similar way, and the galaxies that formed inside of it eventually started to spin the same way. And we've actually discussed this cosmic filament and some of the new observations in one of the videos in the description. So we actually know this definitely exists, we know that it contains huge amounts of gas that eventually forms galaxies, and we know the gas inside of this filament, which usually stretches for millions and sometimes billions of light years, tends to move and spin in a very similar way. This is just the result of the motion of the gas across the universe. And so by being formed inside of this filament and obviously having the influence from the spin of gas, we do expect quasars and of course other galaxies to kind of have very similar properties. Which would definitively explain why we're seeing so many galaxies spinning in the same way and why we see a lot of other properties that seem to be kind of aligned even though they shouldn't be. Which not only confirms once again that cosmic filament plays a huge role in the formation of galaxies, it also confirms the overall connection of everything in the entire universe. 
this huge cosmic web that connects everything also gives everything very, very similar properties. With this explanation basically making the most sense and not breaking any major ideas, while also being based on actual physical evidence we have from many years of observation. And unfortunately, this was not one of the explanations in the study, which basically takes me to the overall problem with the author of the study and his overall approach. Last year, Leo Shamir basically went viral for a slightly different reason. In 2024, he published another study where he essentially tried to provide evidence for an extremely old hypothesis that was proven to be incorrect many years ago, known as the tired light hypothesis. And quite a lot of cosmologists were not happy with the study, mostly because it was misinterpreting a lot of data, with the overall assumptions basically being incorrect. But nevertheless, the study still went viral and possibly created a bit of a confusion for a lot of public. I'm going to post some links in the description talking about why this particular study was incorrect and why the author of the paper was basing his ideas on incorrect assumptions, but in essence this was the same thing, a single author study making grandiose proposition. And so because here we have the same author and once again a grandiose proposition, I'm going to have to be super skeptical about this until someone does confirmational analysis and actually does additional interpretation of data before we can come to any conclusions. For now though, the study itself and the discovery, though I guess maybe surprising, is really not that surprising, just because of the discovery from quasars back in 2014. But once additional evidence comes out, and once we discover something else, I'll definitely come back and talk more about this, because this is a super fascinating topic. Because for all we know, maybe it's actually not the cosmic web that causes the spin, but really something entirely different. And so until we actually come up with some other explanations, in this case explanations that do make sense and don't break physics, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.